Buff Nation. Let's go. Welcome back, man. Great to be back. Great to be back. We are DMVR Buffs Primetime, presented by Illegal Pete's. Check out any of their 10 Colorado locations for happy hour every single day, 3 to 6 p.m. Jake Schwanitz, RK, is back, as we said, doing a... Big wig stuff out there at the combine, rubbing elbows with the commissioner. Yeah, yeah, you could <laughs> you could say that, I guess. Um, Jackson State fan, uh, Commissioner Roger Goodell. Ah, yes, of course. <laughs> He's got a, his nephew, right? Yes, exactly. That's or right. Something in law. Yeah, something along those lines. He's got ties. <clears throat> He's tied in. He's maybe uh, <laughs> we can get him tied in the Colorado Buffaloes football too. I th- I wouldn't be surprised. Everyone's in right now. Um, we just came back from a pretty informative, pretty cool press conference talking to defensive coaches. I think we learned a lot. I feel like I did. Uh, also got to hear from coaches who we usually don't hear from. But we do have some news to talk about before we get to that, Ryan. I don't know if you heard, but the Buffs currently don't have a defensive tackles coach. Yes, I did hear about this. I did. Uh, we talked yesterday about Brian Early from Houston, but literally after the sh- right after the show ended, we heard that Sal Sanciri, Alabama's special assistant to the head coach and defensive line coach, is the favorite now to be on, become Colorado's DT coach. You like that? Coach Prime, man. Yeah, you like that for sure. Um, I threw out the name Chidera Uzo Deribe. Yep. Um, he is the defensive ends coach at Georgia right now. Uh, he played football at Colorado, um, loves the buffs, d- and has done an incredible job on the recruiting trail. Um, I just wonder if it's a little bit too late in the process to uh, to go reel him in right now, especially for a lateral move, at least from a um, title standpoint. Right. Uh, Sal Sanciri, he is a longtime coach, though, a uh, longtime defensive line coach. Was defensive coordinator back in 2012 for Tennessee, but has been a defensive ends, defensive line, or linebackers coach at multiple places since Florida State, the Oakland Raiders, Florida, Alabama, of course, uh, Carolina Panthers. I mean, this guy's been all over the place. So uh, I think we're feeling good about Sal Sincere if he becomes the hire here. Yeah, and I mean, to be honest, um, whoever they hire, I was going to feel good about because, you know, you have to trust – Coach Prime and the relationships that he has. Um, the arc for Coach Hill is absolutely wild. Mm-hmm. I mean, just bouncing around small school, small school, small school, small school. Gets the call to LSU, does a great job there and was highly respected there uh, and and coveted, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and Coach Prime's able to prime away and then immediately goes to the NFL. It's kind of a crazy, like, I don't know, you know, you call it like a hockey stick curve. Yeah. It's just like flat, 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 and then just straight up. Mm -hmm. Um, So you got to be stoked for him. Um, And just the fact that Coach Prime was able to identify him in the first place, a guy that was so well thought of that just a few months later he gets plucked to go to the NFL, um, shows you that Coach Prime has an eye for this stuff. Uh, And so whoever he finds to, to take over this role, uh, is going to be highly qualified um, and, and really, in my opinion, will be elevated uh, and highlighted by the people that they are surrounded by. For sure. Sal Sanciri, though, does have a very impressive background. Going back to his playing career at Pittsburgh, um, I don't see what position he played, but he was a three-year starter there and in 1981 was named team captain and a consensus first-team All-American. Uh, he's coached players like Julius Peppers, I mean, Will Anderson this last year at Alabama. And he's the father to, if you remember, Vinny Sanciri. Yes. Who was like a heartbeat guy of that Alabama defense in, I don't know, like 2013-ish, I mm-hmm. want to say. Mm-hmm. So very qualified. Uh, very exciting to see that development. We'll see if he gets hired, though. Yeah, for sure. Recruiting news, Ryan. Um, we're out of a dead period. Period ended at the end of February. And we're already hearing about five and four stars again. We love to see it. It's crazy. Uh, Yesterday, we talked about Jonathan Paler, who listed CU in his top eight. He's a 5'9", 170-pound athlete from North Carolina, ranked 101st overall in the 247 sports consensus. A two-way player again, uh, has over 25 offers, Bama, Clemson, you name it all. Love to hear it. 
Uh, there also yesterday we talked about uh, Lemason Waller. Waller. What a name. <laughs> Waller the third also. Oh, he's gonna. He's <laughs> guaranteed league. Um, he is visiting CU during this spring. 6'2", 170, also an athlete. Ranked four stars by 247, 99th player overall. 40 plus offers. Um, two way player. Do we know what what to what position he plays on each side? Uh, I know he plays wide receiver. It just I'm assuming defensive back. Yeah, I don't yeah, know which be. one, but it says added 36 tackles and two interceptions. Okay. So 36 tackles. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, especially if you're playing offense. Right. Too. And then today we got news that 247 Sports composite five star edge Dylan Stewart will be visiting Colorado. They said the Friday before the spring game. I think we can assume he'll be here most of that weekend, though, and for the spring game, if he's going to be here. Uh, 28th player overall in the nation, fourth overall edge. Unbelievable, man. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, every time I hear this, it just reminds me Coach Prime has big plans for this spring game. Mm -hmm. It will not be like any other spring game you've ever seen. No. Nope. It's going to be out of control. 6'5", 235, Dylan Stewart is listed at. Um, oh, go ahead. Is that the last bit of news you have? Yeah, because it segues me nicely. Six five two thirty five. What does that sound like? Um, I don't know. What does it, sound like? <laughs> it sounds like a basketball player. Ah. Uh, and I asked uh, Nick Williams kind of what they were looking for in that um, buck position, as they're calling it. Mm -hmm. We've heard it called a million different things in different defenses, but I was just really fascinated by him saying like, I'm looking for length and maybe guys that are former basketball players, two way sports, two way athletes. Um, and that just reminded me of that hearing, you know, kind of that yep. tweener, like just athlete type that you can play out in that position. And I wanted to ask that because you've seen defenses utilize that star backer. It's been called a buff backer here mm -hmm. before. Now we're calling it a buck. Um, you can use so many different body types and position types at that. You know, we've even talked about, could you use Trevor Woods yep. down there in the box like that? Uh, and, and so I wanted to know kind of what he envisioned for it. He essentially, what did he say between 230 and 250 pounds? Yeah. Um, and so he, he's looking at it a little, a little on the bigger, much more of a traditional pass rush type. Um, but it was it was exciting to hear just because you kind of get an idea of like the profile of player they want to fit in there. Yeah, we learned a lot today. Let's talk about it. Yep. But first, a word from our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Um, are we still making money on Nikola Jokic props? I know Dre talked about yesterday how he's just hammering away. Are you yep. still the same? It's uh, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. I liked your tweet today, too. The The odds do not reflect the discourse around Nikola Jokic right yeah, now. Yeah, we're talking like this is some sort of race. Yeah. Like, it's not a race. The race is over. It's He's minus 380 and Joel Embiid's plus 600. We're talking about 1-4 to four versus 6-1. to one. Yep. Disrespectful, man. I mean, the whole, the whole thing has gotten out of hand now just because <laughs> really we're trying to drum up any, any possible way to make this look like it's a conversation. Um, and what, what separates him is that he does it every single night. Yeah. Undefeated with a triple-double. Right. And, but it's not even just the triple-double. It's just he delivers every night. There are, there's no nights off. He has one game all season where he shot under 50% from the field. That's one the whole season. Unreal. So that's what I think really ends up separating him in these conversations. We don't have to get into a whole Jokic thing, but <laughs> is you just go every single night. You, you he goes out there and he dominates, and that's why it's easy to bet on him. And there you go, and you can bet on the Nuggets and Nikola Jokic at DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and sign up with code DMVR. New customers can bet five dollars and get two hundred dollars in bonus bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, with code DMVR. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details and gambling problem. Call 1-800-522-4700. I swear TV says which props. The triple-double prop is, are we down to where the odds are not even worth betting on now, or is it still worth So what on? I've been doing now is parlaying triple-double and a win. There you go. And that gets you into a, a, nice, a nice position. And the Nuggets are, I think, up to now 25-0 and 0 when he has a triple-double. There you go. Use that information as you will. Shout out also to Jive Hive, the virtual dispensary on wheels that offers the convenient pricing and the privacy and security 
to deliver wherever you are. They do not have any brick and mortar stores, so they have no overhead, which allows them to keep their prices low for you, the customer. Uh, check out jivehive.com, J I V E H Y V E. Dot com and get your order delivered the same day or schedule a delivery window. They'll be there to say hi. Head on over to jivehive.com and enter your address to find out if Jive Hive can deliver to your door. Now serving Aurora, Greenwood Village, Monument, Fountain, and various areas of El Paso County. That's J-I-V-E-H-Y-V-E dot com. Don't drive, Jive Hive. Let's talk about what we learned today, Ryan. Let's do it. Um, get my notes out. There you go. Do we start off with how we went in order here, Charles Kelly? Yeah, we can do that. So Charles Kelly, uh, first to take the podium today. First off, a lot of admiration for Colorado and Boulder. Kind of talked about, I mean, he's obviously known about CU for a while. He's been coaching for forever, but just talked about how back in the day, they were a much better team than they have been recently, and that's how he sees them. Um, just talked about how he's been fascinated by the tradition of Colorado going back all the way to when they were winning national championships in the 90s. Got a lot of admiration, and uh, he's spreading a lot of knowledge already, it seems like. Yeah, and that was – so I, I, I kind of categorized my notes by each guy, and then I put a couple of, like, big-picture takeaways. And one of the, my biggest big-picture takeaways is that almost every coach we've talked to, and we've now got, talked to the defensive and the offensive staff, has talked about what Colorado was like when they were kids. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder if that legitimately – has had an impact on not obviously getting coach prime, but then going on down the list, bringing guys here and just people seeing like that kind of sleeping giant idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone talked about it. Colorado was different when I was growing up. Colorado was different when I was playing college ball. And I think that there's a legitimate feeling within that staff of like, if they could do it back then we can do this now. Uh, and from Charles Kelly to, um, you know, to, to coach Hart, to coach Prime, everyone has mentioned this, and I think it actually matters. And, and I almost wonder if it's like this was the last chance for CU to kind of capitalize off that yeah. wave is like getting these guys in here who remember what they once were. Um, he talked, I think Adam Munster Tiger asked him about the alignment of the defense, how it's going to look. Charles Kelly said, we want to be a very multiple defense. We want to be able to adjust things week to week. And it kind of goes with what I think we've learned just by watching the film is that they are going to play to play even. They might line up completely differently. Um, they're going to be very multiple and kind of just use that to their advantage in terms of the players. Um, I mean, we'll get into Jeremiah Brown and Andre Hart, but it sounds like a lot of these players, especially on the defensive side of the ball, are going to be playing kind of multiple positions. Yeah, and I love that. Um, it's... It, it's really just we're, we're, we get caught in our ways just talking about football because we've been doing it for so long. But like almost no one is is pigeonholing themselves into one defense anymore, right? Especially on the, in the college level, mm -hmm. you know, you do have some of those NFL teams who are like we do. If we run a four three, um, and we're sticking to it. It's gotten more and more multiple everywhere you go, and it starts at college. Obviously, you know, it probably started at high school, right. but it's now worked its way into college. Where like you almost never hear a defensive coordinator say what they run because mm -hmm. they just run everything. Yep. Um, biggest thing I love that he said was that we're going to be aggressive tack attacking defense. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the most interesting things to me about college is teams that sit back. I don't understand sitting back in college. Um, now, you're going to run into some guys that you might have to sit back against, Caleb Williams being one of them, yeah. right? Like, you can send heat at him all day, and what's probably going to happen more times than not is he escapes out of there, and then now you'll just have less defenders defending it downfield. Mm -hmm. But when you're playing these college quarterbacks, the number one thing that, that a lot of them lack is processing speed. And it's one of the reasons why I like being multiple, but it's one of the reasons why I love bringing heat mm -hmm. because, you know, even going back two years ago, Colorado played Texas A&M um, in the first game of the season, I believe. Um, no, second game second, of the season. Yeah. And they were able to go toe to toe and absolutely clamp an SEC defense because or an SEC offense because why? They had a young quarterback in there. They played press man on the outsides and brought heat and they were able to get there and force him into turnovers, force him into bad decisions. Um, and this is what you get in college football, you know. Now, you're playing in the conference of quarterbacks this year, right? 
And so you're, you are going to have to be smart about who you want to do this to. But like a guy like Penix, you might have to heat him up because if you let yeah. him sit back there, he will dice you. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, him saying we're going to be aggressive, we're going to be attacking, we're not going to sit back was nice to hear for me. For sure. Um, he also said, just I asked him what he thinks makes him a great recruiter. Basically the same question I asked Tim Brewster last week. Um, and it's a takeaway that we talked about in the car on the way back is that these coaches have a lot of have admiration just on the coaches around them. And Coach Kelly's quote was, I've worked for a lot of great head coaches and the head coach can determine how well you can recruit. And I mean, we've seen that firsthand with Coach Prime leading the way now, the level of or the caliber of recruit that CU was just in the conversation for has gone tremendously up and the amount or the talent of the recruit that they're getting to commit has gone up tremendously too. On the coaching staff as a whole, Coach Kelly said, I think it's a great staff. I've known a lot of these guys for many years, and one of the blessings as a coach is the relationships that you make amongst all the coaches on the staff. Um, everyone loves this staff. Yes. The staff is, a, is really good, mm -hmm. and they're all on the same page. And I get this feeling from them that they're like all rooting for each other, Yeah, um, which sounds obvious, right? But you get into a, a, a building – with a bunch of egos and a bunch of guys who all believe that they deserve the next opportunity. And you can kind of get s some of the energy of like, yeah, you might have to step on a couple of people's toes on your way to the top. I don't get that here at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, Coach Hart did his presser. He walked out of the room and then walked right back in to watch Coach Williams. Like I felt like he just wanted to be in there to support him. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's just cool. I feel like there's a great energy and in, in a real, you know, anyone can use the word family. I get like a real family atmosphere when I when I walk in that building. Yep. Um, I mean, not to jump around too much, but it goes back to what Andre Hart said. And it's like they he's followed Coach Prime, obviously, a lot for a long time. And they've always gone somewhere kind of unexpected. But they kind of do that by design, because when you go to these places where they have the connections, it becomes less of like their family, their thing, because you have all these other people around that you got to kind of integrate. But when you go to these new locations, your Jackson States, your Colorados, it really is just them in a new environment trying to figure it out. Yep. Um, moving on, though, Kevin Mathis, the cornerbacks coach, was up next. I think it was the first question was about Travis Hunter. Um, and he just talked about, or his quote was, Travis is a unique player. He has great skills. His competitiveness is out the door. He's a different type of corner. He's really just a football player. When I look at Travis, I see him more as a receiver playing defensive back. And he was, he had right before that said, Coach Prime was a defensive back playing, you know, both mm -hmm. ways. I see Travis as a wide receiver playing defensive back, which of course, feather in your cap as the guy who yes, says sir. you think he's a lot more natural at the wide receiver position and should make that switch. Um, and man, you see some of those videos that have come out in the last 24 hours. I think uh, it was on well off mm -hmm. of him running routes. And, and I mean, I couldn't agree more, but it's interesting. I mean, you, you just don't see that. You really don't. Mm -hmm. It's extremely unique in that regard because normally guys who are good enough as wide receivers to play wide receivers play wide receiver. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's an old narrative, but there's some truth to it of, like, oh, he switched to defensive back because he couldn't catch, right? That's, like, that right. happens a lot. You get this really fast, really athletic guy, well, he either, you know, struggles with the playbook or doesn't have great hands. Well, you okay, you throw him on the other side, and, you know, they turn into lockdown corners. Um, so it's rare to see a guy <clears throat> with that much ability as a wide receiver and – even his his position coach on the defensive side of the ball says he's a wide receiver playing defensive back. It is very rare to see someone stick with that path mm -hmm. and stick on the defensive side of the ball. Um, coach also talked about his admiration for Coach Prime. I mean, they go so far back. I think when Kevin Mathis was coming into the NFL as an undrafted free agent, that was when Coach Prime was on the Dallas Cowboys kind of towards the tail end of his career. Mm -hmm. um, he just talked about his practice habits how blown away he was by that and the fact that he couldn't get on the practice field because Coach Prime was always taking away practice reps, always trying to go up against Michael Irvin. Um, and that competitiveness is something that we've kind of seen permeating throughout the team, throughout the coaching staff. Uh, and it just goes way back to Coach Prime's time as a player, though, it seems. 
When I heard that, I immediately thought of Peyton Manning. Yeah. Peyton Manning never gave up a first team rep in his career until he had to because he was hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and in Denver, of course, it was that last season he was hurt and Brock Osweiler finally took it. But never gave it up. Refused. First team reps belong to me. Uh, and he was very serious about that, and, and I truly mean it. He never gave one away, uh, and, and some of the greats are like that. Um, and, I, and I hope that these players hear this stuff and absorb this stuff about Coach Prime. Um, and, I, and I wanted to ask a question to Charles Kelly. The microphone didn't make it to me, but I was going to ask what's the difference between the really talented five-star players that come in and don't make it to the league and the ones, the Derwin Jameses, you know, yeah. who, uh, who explode. But – if I had to guess what his answer would have been, it would have been that work ethic. Mm -hmm. Um, And for some reason, you know, Coach Prime also gravitated towards uh, Kevin Mathis' work ethic, and that's why he's here now, right? He Mm -hmm. saw him and he said, oh, this guy knows what's up. And Kevin said it himself, um, you know, Coach Prime, being the defensive backs coach for Coach Prime, has to be one of the toughest jobs in the country. Mm-hmm. But Coach Prime trusts me that I'm going to teach them the way that he would teach it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, that, that type of trust is really important. After uh, talking about Travis, I asked Coach Mathis about having Cormani McLean and Travis Hunter, what that can do for the defense. I mean, this isn't groundbreaking, but he's just kind of reemphasizing the point that we knew from Coach Prime. Uh, Kevin Mathis said, we're probably the only place in America that is going to start from the outside in. We've got two good ones on the outside that's going to allow us to do what we need to do on the inside to make plays. There you go. Pretty unprecedented, man. And and, and it is unprecedented, but I've I've tried to explain it so many times about if you have two lockdown corners, everyone else's job just got incredibly easier. Mm -hmm. Uh, Next up was Coach Hart. Um, As we talked, as I said. um, Best of the bunch. Yeah. Uh, you asked him about the the Coach Prime documentary quote. Yep. About Coach Hart saying that Coach Prime's going to make him a head coach one day. And uh, I thought he gave a really good answer. He gave a head coach type of answer to that. He, he's going to be a head coach. Yes. Uh, I'm extremely confident in that. I was before, but now after talking to him and being in a room with him, there's just something to be said about a, a head coach vibe. And he totally has the head coach vibe. Uh, and he and I, uh, so I fully believe he's going to be a head coach somewhere, and I believe he's going to be a successful head coach somewhere. And I forget, I, I'm going to say Kevin Mathis was the one who said it, um, but he said you won't meet a single player that plays for him that doesn't love him. Yep. And that type of love and admiration from players uh, goes a long way when you're a head coach. So just listening to him talk, I'm like, oh yeah, he is going to be a head coach. He's going to be a head coach soon. Coach Hart also talked about how he and other coaches have been being received around the country when they're out and recruiting. Uh, I've got this quote, we're up and coming. It's amazing the amount of attention we've gotten. People are excited when we're at the door. This is a gold mine up here. And then I didn't get the rest of the quote, but he literally talked about driving up 36, coming over the hill, seeing the flat irons on the front range. Like, I mean, he's already getting it, man. Yeah, he, he said, like, I don't even start recruiting until we come over that hill. Yeah. You know, we're just chatting, chatting, chatting. As soon as we get to that hill, that's when I start recruiting. Mm-hmm. That's when I show them, you know, what, what they, what's awaiting them in Boulder. And I, and I love that. That, that was like, it, you, you know, you, if you change the voice, that could have been Bill McCartney talking. For sure. Um, I mean, we've just heard that a lot from these coaches, is that this is a gold mine, sleeping giant we got last week from Gary Harrell. Um, it's just good to see that stuff kind of already being echoed. If I could go back to Charles Kelly for a second, I just missed something in my notes. I loved what he said about coaching players to play situations, Mm. not defenses. Mm -hmm. You know, you can teach cover three all you want. Right. But you can't play cover three the same on every single play. Or you can teach cover two man. But you can't play that the same on every play. You got to know down and distance, and you got to know what that means for you, right? You know, there's nothing worse than when you see a team out there and they're in man, but the core, you know, it's it's third and four, and the corner is afraid of the guy, you know, the, the wide receiver on the other other side. So he's giving him ten yards of cushion, mm-hmm. and the dude runs four yards, turns around, catches it, moves the chains, and it's like, what are we what are we doing here? You know, like. I, I really loved that, and I don't know if I've ever necessarily heard a coach talking about that. Like, it's not just about coaching the schemes; it's about coaching how to play the situations, mm-hmm. and I think that'll go a long way. 
uh, when Coach Hart was asked about the linebacking core at CU just as a whole, um, he said, I mean, we heard a lot today. Fast, tough, smart, uh, disciplined. disciplined with character. We heard that all today, I think, from at least three of the four. Uh, but Coach Hart picked out one word specifically, and that was smart. He thinks he has a really smart linebacking room. And uh, I wish I could have asked him more about guys. I did ask him about uh, Jeremiah Brown, mm -hmm. but I wanted to ask him about Morgan Pearson, just like a recruit coming in who was projected to be wide receiver, another athlete. They move him to linebacker. Uh, but on Jeremiah we'll Brown... We'll talk about it with him when he comes on the show. Exactly. Uh, soon enough. Uh, on Jeremiah Brown, though, I asked what kind of player Colorado's getting in him. Coach Hart said, you're going to get a kid that's going to play multiple, multiple positions but is going to make some noise come Saturdays. And I think that's a great description of Jeremiah Brown. And I think he said something along the lines of, like, no one will work harder than him, yeah. mm -hmm. um, which is high praise. But and he was I think he was even specifically talking about the – like studying film yeah, his and note taking habits. yeah oh yeah. right right he'll take some of the best notes you'll ever see yep. dude i can't tell you how important that is mm -hmm. you know i think that um because of the way that our school system is set up in the united states we from a young age learn to like hate the idea of taking notes right um at least i know i did mm -hmm. um you know you just learn these these like bad study habits um, cramming for the test, that sort of thing. I mean, I think we all do it, but like yep. th that stuff translates to football. And I think it's really hard to then have good study habits when you're doing it in school all the wrong ways just to try and scrape by and, you know, make a grade and graduate. So for him to say, like, to take some of the best notes, like that goes a long way. Yep. I've said it before on this show, you know, I, I talked to Aqib Talib in. I think he was looked at one of those looked at as one of those guys who was just dominating with his physical ability, right? He's so fast, he's so big that he was locking up big big wide receivers. But he told me like, no, dude, the reason I lock up those guys is because I watch more film than anyone else, mm -hmm. and that type of stuff will just carry you, especially in college, where oh, you yeah. just know there's still there's still those guys in college who were the best player on their high school team. And they show up and they're just like, yeah, what, what do you, like, I don't have to do any of this stuff. I just show up on Saturday, put yeah. on the pads and, uh, you know, out athlete everyone. When you can get a leg up on your competition by outworking them mentally, mm -hmm. that, that's big in college. For sure. Uh, the final coach was Nick Williams. Before we talk about him, guys, just want to say hit that thumbs up button. Also, get your questions in right now. We'll get to those very, very shortly. And as always, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and give us five stars if you wouldn't mind on Spotify and or Apple Podcasts. We greatly appreciate that. Um, Coach Williams, we talked about him a little bit already, um, but he was asked kind of how he became one of the nation's best recruiters. And again, man, praising the coaching staff and the head coaches that he worked under. His quote was, I recruit hard because I work with guys that recruit hard and I learn from them. I mean, he's been under Dan Lanning at Georgia, uh, Kirby Smart, of course, at Georgia, Jimbo Fisher at A&M, for only like being 28, 29 years old. I mean, he's got a very impressive resume. For real. And, I mean, that's another one. Recruiting is just work ethic. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, you, you, you do win with charisma and, you know, uh, the other things that you think about when you think about selling something to someone. I know Coach Prime says they don't sell anything, but... In the end, you that that is kind of what you're doing, right? You're you're trying to explain to someone why your product is better than whatever other yep. products are out there. Um, <clears throat> but you just have to want it. He clearly does, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm sure he did learn from the people around him of like, oh, this is just you gotta you have to beat these people for this with power of will. Yep. Um, I got to ask Coach Williams about. This just stood out to me when we saw that video, I think, from the pregame show, kind of talking about how he loves to show NFL film to recruits mm -hmm. um, and just how much of an effect that is. And he talked about, like, you know, when you put on NFL film, especially for him, that's what got his attention, was watching NFL film. And that's what he thinks gets recruits' attention. His quote was, if you take a defensive end and show them Von Miller film, you get their attention right away. Um, I mean... He also expanded on, you know, this isn't something that's like novel, like other coaches do do this, mm -hmm. but he just loves to do it. And he's been able to find a lot of uh, the recruits attentions just by doing this practice. I mean, it makes sense to me. You know, the, those are the names that they know, the names that they've seen, the guys that they look up to. 
<clears throat> and it's it's essentially like hands-on coaching, right? You're, you're just showing them a visual representation of what you want them to do. Mm-hmm. Um, also had another quote that I thought was interesting. I truly love guys that love ball. They don't have to be convinced to do extra. I want the ones waiting at the door in the morning to go to work. Uh, Coach Williams loves talking about his passion, and I think he looks for players and recruits that have a similar level of passion. So. Also highly interesting that he was recruited to Georgia as a defensive back and by the end yeah. of his playing career was essentially playing that buck position, you know, on the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, just like the physical development that, uh, you know, goes from like the defensive backfield to linebacker to up on the line of scrimmage in one play in, in, just over yeah. the course of his playing career. Has the makings of a great coach. I'm really excited to see what Nick Williams does. Uh, I mean, a lot of these guys for sure, but I think he's another guy that we're going to look back in a few years and go, wow, he was on that staff at Colorado too? Like, yeah, he's going to be coaching defense or something somewhere. Bro, how about so someone just mentioned Tyler Brown in the comments? Oh, my God. Benching over 400 pounds. And squatting over like 500. He's cleaning like 275. That is just insane. He is going to be a wrecking ball for this offense. He is. He is. And another one people were mentioning, uh, uh, Nico Reed mm-hmm. got – Travis Hunter in a one-on-one and I know then there was like a back and forth over yeah well it's one rep no one's saying I think Nico Reed can clamp Travis Hunter all day long I just think the fact that he put that on display that he is I'm glad people are getting to see what we talked about which is like dude can play yeah we've been trying to tell you this entire time yes yes so you know he's not better than Travis Hunter by any stretch of the mind but when you can you know just show that not only to to us and to our listeners to your teammates, right? Especially the new ones, mm-hmm. who I, I hope this doesn't exist, but I do imagine there's a little bit of a new guys, old, old guys, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and you're definitely seeing those guys mingle and become brothers, which I love to see. But you know what I was gonna say is those guys who we have been telling people like this guy can go, this guy can play, yeah, still have to prove that to their teammates, right? And so even I just think little moments like that. Uh, go a long way in, in earning the respect of each other. For sure. Um, people are bringing it up in the comments, so I just pulled it up. Tyler Brown does have an NIL deal with Phil Long Dealership. Nice. Let's go. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, Phil Long of Chapel Hills, Ford of Chapel Hills. There we go. So there it is. We love to see it. Um, yeah, man. His stock's just going up. Tyler Brown is going to be... I think he'll be like a fan favorite eventually once the season's all said and done. Absolutely. All right, let's get to you guys' questions. But first, a real quick word from Breckenridge Brewery. Let's also get um, to 200 likes. Let's do that. 121 right now. We can definitely get 80 more. Uh, Breckenridge Brewery and DMVR are teaming up to give some lucky DMVR fans the ultimate game day experience. We have two giveaways coming up for Avs tickets and for Nuggets tickets. Avs tickets are coming up very soon. We're giving away these a week before the game. So I guess that'd be today is the last day for this Avs giveaway. We're giving away two tickets to next Thursday's game against the Kings, section 102, row 5. Uh, Justin says it's close enough to smell the players on the bench. You're also getting Lexus Club access, parking pass, DMVR gear. And then at the end of the month, March 30th, that is also a Thursday, the Nuggets will be playing the New Orleans Pelicans. We're giving away two tickets, courtside, row 2, Lexus Club access, parking pass, and DMVR gear. So head on over to thedmvr.com slash sweeps and complete the form to enter. You must be 21 or older. Links are in the show description, and winners will be selected, as I said, one week before each game. And then shout out to Run Your Pool. With the madness coming up, guys, you will be able to compete against us directly in our Run Your Pool bracket challenge. Um, brackets open after Selection Sunday on March 12th, and you'll be able to fill one out until March 16th at 10.15 p.m. Mountain Time. Um do that, and you can earn some cash prizes, also some DMVR locker gift cards if you get first place. We're giving away 300 bucks and a $75 DMVR locker card for first place. Second place, $150 cash prize. And third place, $50 cash prize. Head on over to play.runyourpool.com slash DMVR, and don't forget to get your picks in when the bracket is live. Links are also in the description for that as well. Um, so we got... It was a little bit less than a week, so go ahead and sign up now, and then you can fill out your bracket whenever we're ready. Questions? 
quickly just to talk about that one on ones video. Yeah. Jimmy Horn is a problem. Oh, dude. Big problem. People in the chat yesterday were throwing out Deshaun Jackson comps, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, he just runs away from people. Who was the, the guy that we wanted to transfer from Jackson who went to Louisville? Kevin Coleman. Yes. Um, there's a part of me that wonders if he didn't want to come because of... Because of Jimmy Horn? Because of Jimmy Horn. <laughs> yeah. Because I think you're taking him, putting him in a similar role in the offense, uh, and Jimmy Horn is just different. Mm -hmm. Different type of speed. Even when he beat uh, Dylan Edwards in that race, now they had like... The, he got a jump start. <laughs> he, got, he had a little jump start. Well, no, the second time I thought... The first time I thought he beat him clean. The second time I thought there was a jump start, and the mm -hmm. third time Dylan got Dylan him. Dylan got him, yeah. But they also had like the weights behind them, which changes right, the things. chains, yeah. Either way, I was like, the fact that there's anyone on the team that can beat uh, Dylan Edwards in a race <laughs> in any fashion in yeah. any format uh, is huge for me. And Jimmy Horn, like, he doesn't look small. No, but he's listed at like the five ten one sixty five that all these receivers are getting listed at. Yeah, he he kind of has just like a little bit of size to him, even uh -huh. for being you know that type of receiver. I'm telling you, dude. I mean, I don't think I'm breaking news to anyone on this show, but he is a problem. Yep. And in Sean Lewis's offense, I'm going to plug the film room again. Go to the DMVR. Check it out. Xavier Weaver, Jimmy Horn film room. But we saw like the year over year change in his role from his freshman season to last year, his sophomore season. And he was running the ball a lot more, lining up in the backfield, like in motion a lot. And in Sean Lewis's offense, he is definitely going to be like one of, if not the chess piece for this team. Yeah. I can't wait. What's that mean? Uh, 300 or more likes. Oh, 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 oh. We're setting the bar high. Let's go. Let's get 300. <laughs> um, all right. Questions. From Big Teasy, did you hear JSU president resigned? Fired today. Wow. Uh, the guy that gave prime grief is now on his way out. Karma. Wow. I did wow. not hear that. Did not know that. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, we'll have to dig into that. Angela's back. As she always is. Jake and RK looks like Jeremiah Brown going to be a very unique player on CU defense. Looks like he will line up in a lot of different places. Yeah, I mean, played linebacker at JSU, listed as outside linebacker now. We knew at JSU his blitzing capabilities, and I'm sure we're going to see that a lot more here at Colorado. Pieces. Need them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the defense actually has a little bit of depth, which oh, yeah. is so nice to see. Yeah. We didn't even have Jeremiah Brown as a starter when we did our starting. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and they have depth at safety. They have depth at corner. Um, they don't have it too much on the defensive line. Mm -hmm. But I guess, you know, some of the guys that maybe we thought were leaving staying around, um, they have they have some depth there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to be able to rotate guys in and out, and they're going to be able to use a guy like Jeremy Br Jeremiah Brown all over the place. Excited for him. And he's a dog. He is a dog. Can't wait. He moves some weight, too, in the weight room from what we've been seeing on wall off. All of these guys, man. I swear they're just they're pushing harder than ever before. Yep. I think so, too. Big TZ with the super chat now. You think Boulder is ready for the revamped band HBCU vibes? The band is part of the team concept. I'm all for it. I can't wait. That would be incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I hope I hope that happens. Yep. I really hope that we get some some hbcu flavor uh in the band for sure make halftime a lot more fun it will really show the power of coach prime if he can get, if he could change the band absolutely we'll see next question from sean again any news on prime meeting with pac-12 officials today um i haven't heard that. i've seen a ton of rumors coming out though it's like it's kind of like that season where I don't even know what to believe or like right, whose sources right. are right or anything. I guess we'll see maybe from a well-off video what he was up yeah, to yeah. at um, some point today. One of the top posts on Reddit today was uh, apparently Utah and Colorado maybe leaving the Pac-12. So Four? I, I don't know. That's all it says. That's all the post says? It literally says David Woods, host of Podcast of Champions, reports that he has been told by source that Utah and Colorado have already agreed to leave the Pac-12. I don't know about that. That's what I'm saying. It's a weird time, man. <laughs> um, next question. I'm a, that at least gets me to uh, pull out the old Rolodex and send out some texts tonight. <laughs> there you go. Well, there's this. We talked about this on Monday. This is the topic of our show then. 
What do you think about the Pac-12 and ACC potentially becoming one conference? Nah. No? <laughs> nah. First of all, we know what these, what these abbreviations stand for, right? Yep. One is Pacific. The other is Atlantic. You're not a fan of the APAC, the Atlantic Pacific? No, and I also don't want uh, to, to be traveling to Florida for away games. Yeah. No, I'm not in. I like pack like with, <laughs> you know, like thick with two C's. Yeah, Let's just be packed with two C's. <laughs> What's the second? P A C C. Ah, <laughs> I see you. I see you. The Pacific Atlantic Coastal Conference. Coastal Conference. <laughs> <laughs> Count uh, me out. Count me out. Let's just go to the big, the uh, Big Ten, please. There you go. Are these defensive press conference posted anywhere yet? Lawrence asks. Uh, not yet. See you. We'll post them eventually. We will get the video again also, and we will cut those up and show you guys um, some clips tomorrow for sure. What was that, like 7, 8 o'clock last time? Yeah, it took a while. They went up, so it'll be a minute. Yep. Um, Check in now. Still don't have them, so we'll have them eventually. Jared, how long do you plan to keep up with the the dailies? Dailies? I'm assuming daily shows. Talked about this again today, too. I think this is our new normal, man. Forever. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's that that's the plan um yeah that's the plan you guys yep. aren't getting rid of us anytime soon yep big tz for the spring game are we grilling or should i coordinate illegal pizza or another <laughs> boulder establishment to cater i love that big T is tz is offering uh, his <laughs> services to coordinate we will uh we'll have a plan together we will very very soon guys i promise yep. um as soon as next week maybe Let's go. I swear, TV, I know you've seen the Amazon JSU documentary, but did you watch the YouTube series following them in high school with Coach Hart as HC and the first season at JSU? No, I have not. Have you seen that? Mm -mm. Is that the bar stool? Oh, that may be that. I had, truthfully, I haven't watched that. So, yeah, I I haven't either. Uh, Drop the name of that in the comments, I swear, TV, if you're here, though. For sure. Next question. Still got 44 likes. We can get there. Come on, guys. Sean Actually, again. That's 34. 34, yep. Uh, Sean with the super chat. Do you guys read anything in the prime meeting with the Pac 12 on campus today? Saw Prime embracing his former Niners teammate, Merton Hanks, assistant commish. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. I did not know that. I saw the video. I didn't realize he was the assistant commissioner of the Pac 12. Well, there was a guy in uh, yes, yesterday, two days ago, video that had like a Pac 12 sweatshirt on. Hmm. Maybe they're trying to keep him, uh, get him to stay. Or maybe CU is trying to advocate for uh, uneven revenue sharing and get an even bigger piece of it. Uh, the there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one more question. There you go. David, is the film room on a website or here on YouTube? Go to thedmvr.com or if you go to at jakedmvr, I will retweet it right now. Um, but that's where you can find it. Uh, yeah. We talking, which one are we talking about? The Jimmy Horn film room that came oh, out on nice. Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I got, I actually have not even read that myself. So I'll add that to my, uh, my own homework here. Yep. Uh, Jimmy Horn and Xavier Weaver are dogs. You oh, already well. knew about Jimmy Horn, obviously, yeah. but Xavier Weaver is. What can uh, you tell me about Xavier Weaver? Um, I was really another guy who like, when you look at the size and the uh, like height listing, you're not too impressed. It's like six one one seventy. Mm-hmm. But again, looks the part on the field, um, really, really shifty in terms of like his footwork and route runnings and releases can win off the line immediately, can attack all three levels of the field, um, can take a slant or a screen 60 yards if he needs to. He's got some decent speed. He'll make some insane catches. Love um, that. Was really held back by his quarterback last year. I mean, yep. could have had a lot more long touchdowns and big plays if he was just properly led the football over his shoulder. Um, they're just great football players, man. I said it two days ago. One in 11 teams can have good football players. We've been talking about it at CU, and Jimmy Horn and Xavier Weaver are an example of that at uh, USF. Do you think that Jimmy Horn called Xavier Weaver and was like, bro? You got to get out here. Yeah. It's, it's so lit. Shador Probably. is sick. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> I think so. I think um, so, too. It took Weaver a while to commit. Remember, he was visiting, um, I want to say, before signing day. And then 
was in the portal, obviously. Yep. But it took a while. Obviously, he committed last last Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he just kind of I think took his time with it. Um, would it surprise me if those two start first uh, play at wide receiver? Wow. Nineteen more likes. Come on, guys. There we go. Come on. I know you have it in you. Um, someone up up there said, "Do you think the tailgates will be lit this year?" I legitimately think that the game day atmosphere at Colorado is going to be like something most people have never seen before at this school. Mm-hmm. Um, when we when we did the sixty two thirty six day, Jake, I kind of talked a little bit about what it was like that day, right? And how it just felt like the the entire eyes of the college football universe were upon us. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to be every game this year. No, no, yeah. not quite. You know, two top fifteen teams matching up every week. But just this feeling of like all eyes on us. Um, there's going to be game day there one week. There's going to be big noon kickoff there another week. We already know Barstool's coming with their college football show. Um, you know, for the Nebraska game, I'm sure the busing with the boys guys are going to be there. Mm-hmm. Like this stuff. To, I mean, this has not happened at all. Tom Brady's going to be on the sideline one week. Oh, you know, yeah. like. This type of stuff is just going to change everything, but it, it all does matriculate into the the tailgate because <clears throat> tailgates are all about anticipation, right? Like, it's like yeah, the heart of it is like I don't want to wait to get to the stadium. Let's go get there now and right. start drinking. And the an, the anticipation is going to be insane. Like, I wish I could just like go on a time machine for myself and just be a student, maybe for like one or two games because the atmosphere on the hill mm-hmm. leading up to these games is just going to be like nothing else before. Um, so, yeah, from top to bottom, the game day atmosphere in Boulder is going to be unmatched this year. And I, and I just don't know if anyone else can can match the buzz. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, so Brad Crawford, 247 Sports, put out this article today projecting every college game day location for the 2023 college football season. Wow. Did you see That's this? That's an article. No, No, I did not. Uh, the buffs are on there. It's not the Nebraska game, though. Interesting. Did he give that one to Texas, Alabama? Uh, yes, he did. That's, That's kind of lame. It's tough. Yeah, they had it last year, and uh, exactly. I don't know. End of discussion. They yeah. had it last year. He does have week one Colorado at TCU, though. Interesting. Okay, and Boulder. Nope, no Boulder. Oh, so yep. we don't get it in Boulder. That would be bullshit. And it's been 30-plus years since game or 25-plus years, I think, since game day was in Boulder. It was for that Michigan game, I think, after 95. a few years after. Yep. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. I wasn't even – I mean, I was three years old. Yeah. So I haven't, I haven't uh, been able to capitalize on it yet. Um, it's got to come to Boulder this year. just has to. And I think the Nebraska game is the perfect time for it. Texas and Alabama, come on. There's a lot of SEC in here. And There's I don't so think... much, so many times that you can go to either of those schools. Yeah. Let's do something cool and unique. Uh, he's got a lot of SEC locations in here, and um, I think game day's proven that they're trying to... Actually, Mix it up. Yeah, go to different places. Right. So. They were at um, Appalachian State last year. That right. was super cool. Jackson State? Yep, yep. So we'll see. They got to make a trip to Boulder. Sean with the last second super chat. If APAC becomes a thing, Magic City on me <laughs> when y'all visit Atlanta for CU Jaw Tech. Let's go. Let's go. Lemon pepper wings, right? That's what <laughs> yes, we're there sir. for. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, 202 likes. There we, we go. go. We did it. Good stuff. Um, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow talking. Uh, we'll have actual video from what we saw today to share with you guys. And I'm sure we'll have some more recruiting news as we usually do. Uh, Hit that like button on the way out, guys. We'll be back tomorrow. Let's go Buffs. Let's go Buffs.